Stage six subject information afternoon conducted via Zoom. A very special welcome to families that are joining us from Sydney, families that are joining us all around the state, and of course, our current families as well. This is proving to be a great opportunity for us showcasing the college to families that may not be able to travel up to Armadale or who have visited us before, but who have heard great things about us. And so even th though it's been a challenging a period of organising this event, I'm sure that you will find it a worthwhile experience. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end of the, perform at the, end of the uh, presentations as well. There will be a slide that gives you a link through to Anna Caldwell, and Anna, our head of senior school, is going to be receiving questions and delivering them to members of our panel to make sure that the questions are relevant and answered in a timely way. So please, at any point during the presentation, feel free to send your questions through and then we will collate those and respond to them at the end. And girls, it's great to have you joining with us this afternoon. I think even hockey training was cancelled uh, with the cold weather in Armadale, but also to allow you to be here. I hope that you will find this a helpful opportunity of finding out more about the HSC process and what is involved in choosing subjects that your daughter or girls that you will study for the next two years. If you are a parent and this is your first child going through the HSC process, I trust that you will find the information is relevant and also the differences from perhaps when you may have been at school are apparent as well. But if you are a more seasoned veteran and this is not your first order going through, then your advice to other parents would be welcome as well. Both Anna and I have daughters at PLC Armadale that are undertaking their HSC this year. And if ever there was a year of challenge to add to the HSC, it's certainly been 2020. The New South Wales High School Certificate is a well-respected school leaving credential in both Australia and many overseas countries. This is its 53rd year of operation, 19 years in its current format, with the most recent review of the, of the HSC being undertaken in 2019, and we believe another review slated for 2024. The New South Wales High School Certificate is a credential that is recognised and sat by about 75,000 students each year in New South Wales, the ACT, Malaysia, Indonesia, New Guinea, Hong Kong, Singapore, universities in the UK and the US, as well as Australian universities, recognise the HSC for university matriculation. And I'm delighted that each year that I've been principal at PLC Armadale, and I'm sure in the years that have preceded me, girls and graduates from our college have been offered university placements in many of the great eight universities in Australia. We currently have young, old girls studying at ANU, Sydney University, University of New South Wales, Melbourne, Macquarie University, Newcastle, University of Queensland, University of Technology, Charles Sturt, Southern Cross, UNE, and even the Sabon, demonstrating the, certainly the advantage of an all-girls education. Girls, did you realise there are 150 or so courses that you could choose to study for your HSC? No school in New South Wales will offer all of those subjects. All schools will make choices about which subjects they will offer, irrespective of the cohort size or the, uh, the setting of the particular school. So this afternoon is an opportunity for you to find out more about the subjects that are available for you to study at PLC Armadale. Because our size is our strength, and we do know our girls as individual learners, from time to time we have students with very particular areas of interest that may want to pursue studies in subjects that we don't currently offer. What we do in those situations, girls, is we look to support you through a mentoring program and enabling you to access those courses you are interested in through distance education providers or language specialist course providers or TAFE. And our girls find that with the combination of the materials delivered online or through the distance ed mode, 
supported by the teachers that know you and work with you each day in a range of subject areas, that can be quite a, a rewarding way of studying and completing a course of interest. Girls, completing the HSC will be for you both an art and a science. The art is what you will each bring to it as a learner. Your own interests, your skills, your understanding, and most importantly, your willingness to apply yourself to the rigour and discipline of learning. The science of the HSC is the process or structure of the HSC. The rules, the regulations, the procedures, which all schools must follow to make it a fair and level playing field for all. And you'll find out more about the science of the HSC when Mrs Ahern, our Head of Teaching and Learning, speaks to you soon. The HSC is a marathon event, and like all marathons, there'll be different stages, requiring different training, different muscle groups, different strategies along the way. You will find girls that the HSC rewards consistent effort and hard work more than it does innate brilliance or even uh, your own natural ability. And that is again where the all girls advantage really comes to the fore with our small class sizes, with our caring and supportive staff and with girls that are really passionate about the subjects that they have chosen to study. And that's the other good thing about the HSC girls is that from year 11 on, you choose every course that you study. You must study English, but even within English, there are a range of options for you to consider. And I think because you have made those choices to study your courses, it certainly adds to the interest level and engagement in each of those courses. It's around this time each year that I interview our outgoing Year 12 students. This is my sixth year at PLC Armidale, and in five years of interviewing our graduates, I have yet to have a student say to me, well, Mrs Taylor, that was a waste of six years of my life. In fact, it's often the opposite, that our graduates will say that even though they found times at school challenging, and often it is around stage five, that they have found their stage six experience at PLC Armidale exceptionally rewarding. I don't think there's any one reason for that, but I do think it is the cumulative effect of the things that characterise our school, our size, our all girls nature, and the opportunities that are provided in the engagement that you have with your peers and also with the staff to support you. So girls, years 11 and 12 will be much about making memories. It will be a marathon, but a race that you can enjoy. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and for you, that first step will be to decide upon the subjects that you're going to choose to study in years 11 and 12. We're going to watch now a short video featuring different aspects of study at PLC Armidale, and then we will hear from our Head of Teaching and Learning, Mrs Ahern. Enjoy. We're very fortunate at PLC Armadale. We've got lovely small class sizes, excellent facilities. We've got very experienced teachers who are specialists in their subject areas. So the girls are really able to build a very strong and positive relationship with their teachers. Uh, they have that individual support. It links very nicely with the pastoral care program. The pastoral care teachers are often the year 12 teachers as well. So the girls are really well known and really supported on their journey in PLC. The fact that we do have an all-girl environment, they can really focus. They have no other distractions in the classroom. We have small classes, really dedicated staff to actually teach the girls individually and personalise their education. We go above and beyond to make sure that the girls are given every opportunity that they possibly can have and support them through that. So whether it is through their academic studies, whether it's through their sport, through all their co-curricular programs, through their leadership opportunities, everything that they do, they are fully supported here. Our size is our strength. Every learner is known and valued. The other really exciting thing is that the pedagogy is tailored to girls and their learning and I think girls really do flourish here. Particularly in the sciences and maths we have 
girls that are studying really high levels and have accelerated in those subjects, which is not something that you necessarily see at other schools. So I think the PLC Armadale difference is really instilling that confidence. The leadership opportunities they have are really well supported. We have regular meetings with the girls to actually uh, establish how they are travelling, to make sure we give them the support that they need, to hear their voice and give them the opportunity to actually put forward all the initiatives and um, the things that they actually want to see and do and have happen at school. And from an academic viewpoint, we're really fortunate at PLC Armadale. We have History Extension, we have Mathematics Extension 1 and 2, we have English Extension 1 and 2, and we have Music Extension. So in terms of academic extension, there are a lot of opportunities for girls here, and we have girls studying in all of those classes. We do celebrate their successes and have the senior girls act as role models to the younger girls through the Sisterhood program. It's really nice that the girls are able to be positive role models, support the younger students and extend themselves. There is a direct correlation between staff wellbeing and student wellbeing and when staff have positive relationships and feel valued that really does transcend into the classroom. It's definitely something that you feel when you walk around PLC Armadale when you look at the teaching and learning going on in the classroom. It's very obvious that, that staff are great colleagues, collaborate, that we have shared ideas about learning. So I think that this is a really lovely place to both work as a teacher and I'm, for a student, it's, it's a really lovely place to be. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed that introduction and watching that video. Uh, it really is exciting to work here and the teaching and learning is um, really impressive. This is a very exciting time for you students. You are entering your final years of schooling. You can choose what subjects you want to study. The purpose of this evening is to provide you with some guidance in making these choices. I'm just going to talk to you about pastoral care because pastoral care is a really important part of your studies. Um, in terms of pastoral care, it really centres on developing skills that you will use in life after school. Um, it's really about developing independent learners. We're very fortunate at PLC Armadale that our staff do get to know our students really well, both as individuals and as learners. We have very experienced teachers who have been on pastoral care in stage six for a long time and can mentor the girls through all of the different requirements of their final years of schooling. If you do want to ask anything about the pastoral care program, can I please direct you to Mrs Anna Caldwell, our head of senior school, to find out more. Um, she has all the information. So, looking at HSC requirements, one of the things I just wanted to explain is that you have something called the minimum standards test. Now you have five years to complete this. This test is something that we actually sit in year 10 and girls, you will have had a go at some of these tests in term one. It includes four opportunities a year to sit each test, so there isn't any requirement that you need to pass within that year and not have a go till the following year, you get four chances. You do not need to meet the HSC minimum standard to study HSC courses, to sit HSC exams, to receive a HSC assessment and exam results, receive an ATAR or receive a record of achievement. The minimum standard is there to give you the HSC credential which I'll talk about later. So, looking at the HSC, it is a very different part of schooling to what you will be used to. We have what we call subjects in HSC. So, for example, mathematics is classed as a subject. So that's really important to understand when you're choosing subjects. So within that subject, there may be a number of courses. So, for example, we've got mathematics standard, We've got Mathematics Advanced, we've got Mathematics Extension 1 and Mathematics Extension 2. 
So if a student studies, for example, Mathematics Extension 1, Mathematics Extension 2, English Advanced, English Extension 2 and Biology, they wouldn't meet the four subject requirement because you have to study three subjects. So Mathematics is classed as a subject. So looking at the rules, you need to make sure that you are studying 12 units in Year 11. You can then go to a minimum of 10 units in Year 10. They need to be six units of board developed courses. Two units must be in English and you need to pick three courses or more and they must be different subjects. So the ATAR, the mysterious ATAR. What is the ATAR? The ATAR is not a mark, it is a rank and it is calculated by UAC. It is the Australian Tertiary Admission Rank. It is a number between 0 and 99.95 and it indicates a student's position relative to all the students in their age group. So in New South Wales, 16 to 20 year olds would be the age group. So for example, an ATAR of 80 means that you are 20% from the top of your age group. Not year 12, but the top of your age group. Universities use the ATAR to help them to select students for their courses. And admission to most tertiary courses is based on your selection rank. Most universities also use other criteria when selecting students. So for example, if you were looking at studying medicine, uh, there would be um, interviews and, and questionnaires and portfolio. The average ATAR in New South Wales is 70. ATARs are calculated in each state to reflect a student's rank against other students in their state. So you can study in universities in other states because the ATAR applies across Australia. If you're struggling to understand what the ATAR is all about, imagine that we're talking about a fun run like the Sydney City to Surf instead. After you've crossed the finish line, you'll find out how fast you ran and where that result placed you among the tens of thousands of other competitors. In other words, you'll be told your rank. You can train hard and complete a personal best time, but you can't control how fast everyone else will run or what your rank will be. Your ATAR is your rank in the HSC race. Let's say, like Laura, you get an ATAR of around 80. This means that you're ranked in the 80th percentile, or the top 20% of everyone in your age group in New South Wales. But not everyone your age does get an ATAR. Of those that do, about half get an ATAR above 70 and half below. Some students, like Laura's classmate Fred, can be disappointed with their rank. Fred and Laura study the same HSC courses, and Fred's final HSC marks were only 10 marks below Laura's. But the difference in their ATARs was 20. This is because in the HSC race, Laura's marks of 80 placed her much higher in each of her courses. HSC marks between 70 and 80 would generally place you in the crowded middle of the pack. So if you're at the front of that pack, then you'll get a much higher rank. Unlike Fred and Laura, not everyone studies the same HSC courses. In fact, students end up choosing around 27,000 different course combinations. So how can we make sure students are compared and ranked fairly? This is where scaling comes in. We use a series of algorithms to take away the differences between patterns of study. Finally, and most importantly, the ATAR has only one purpose. It's one of the measuring tools universities use to make sure that you and your uni course are a good fit. There are other selection tools as well, but universities have found that students who achieve a high ATAR are well prepared to succeed in their tertiary courses. The ATAR, run your own race. So the ATAR is based on an aggregate of scaled marks in 10 units of ATAR courses, comprising your best two units of English and your best eight units from your remaining units, which can include no more than two units of category B courses. What are Category B courses? They are courses that are VET courses that you sit and examine, or you can choose not to sit the exam in. If you sit the exam, 
then it can be counted towards your ATAR. So, for example, it would be hospitality, primary industries and those sorts of courses. So, scaling, how does it work? So, how do we measure students who sit different exams and study different courses? So, how do they create this rank? So, a good rank is quite difficult to obtain when you're competing against students of high academic ability. And it is about how much effort that you put in rather than innate ability. The underlying principle of scaling is that you should be neither advantaged or disadvantaged by choosing one pattern of study over another. The scaling algorithm estimates what your marks would have been if all courses had been studied by all students and all courses had the same mark distribution. Even though the HS, if we have a look at this example here, even though the HSC mark for society and culture was one of the highest, it won't be included in the ATAR calculation. This is because in New South Wales, the ATAR is calculated from two units of English, even if they are the lowest units, as in this example, plus the next best eight units to make the 10 units in total. So in this example, society and culture has the lowest scaled mark of all the courses apart from English. Students do not find out the scaled marks. The scaled marks are designed to even out this race so that it doesn't matter what subject that you are studying, if you put the work in, you will do well at HSC. The next example, you have English Advanced with a HSC mark of 75, scaled mark 51. Mathematics, HSC mark 75, scaled mark 57. You have biology, HSC mark 75, scaled mark 57. Modern history, HSC mark 75, scaled mark 49. And PDH, 75, 49. This is giving you an example of how scaling can work. So you can see that even if you can get the same HSC mark, the subjects will be scaled differently. So, it doesn't matter which subject you choose, scaling will be favourable if you work hard. It's about getting a good HSC mark. So what is required in each subject and understanding what each subject looks like is really important in your choice. You need to make sure that you align the subjects with you, that it is about your skills, your abilities, what you are interested in. The HSC mark and the ATAR will sort itself out. Approximately 15% of the state receive an ATAR over 90, which gives you an idea of how high and how hard that is. So what we're looking for when we're making subject choices is what will work for me? What pattern of study will work for me? So finally, where to go for some further information would be myself, Lorna O'Hearn, Head of Teaching and Learning, uh, Kate Clinch, Head of Humanities, Jonathan Schumach, Head of STEAM, or Nicola Taylor, Principal. There will be a question and answer session coming up at the end of the presentation. So please, if you have any questions about anything I have spoken about, can you please address those questions to Anna Caldwell and we will answer them at the end. Thank you. In year 11 and 12, I was doing a lot of different things outside of PLC. I was, you know, I was working with the opera, I took time of school, I was playing with the Australian Youth Orchestra, I went to Europe in the middle of just before trials, you know, all of these things. And PLC was really supportive with all of that. You know, they didn't say, you can't do that. They were always very supportive and the teachers made sure that I had all the work I needed and caught up on all of that. And I think that was really important for me to be able to do all of those other things. I have a spot in the Mozartium University in Salzburg 
to do a Bachelor of Music in Harp, which is very exciting. So I'm doing everything I can to get over there. I'll hopefully be leaving in a few weeks. STEAM subjects encourage candidates to explore new concepts and acquire investigative and practical skills. The inquiry nature of these subjects fosters the development of lifelong learning, with an emphasis on skills that are transferable to a variety of contexts. PLC Armadale has a strong track record of excelling in STEAM subjects. We are consistently overrepresented in subject areas that are probably considered non-traditional for girls, with a significantly large portion of our students studying STEAM subjects for the HSC and also continuing on to tertiary education and employment in these fields. The demand for expertise and skills in STEAM areas is growing. In a climate where job security is paramount, it's worth considering the options afforded to you by including STEAM subjects as part of your pattern of study for the HSC. The STEAM faculty can be broadly divided into three subgroups, Mathematics, Sciences and CAPA, or the Creative and Performing Arts. In Mathematics Standard, students extend their mathematical skills beyond Stage 5, without the in-depth knowledge of higher mathematics that the study of calculus would provide. This course prepares students for a wide range of educational and employment aspirations, including continued studies at a tertiary level. Mathematics Advanced is a calculus-based course focused on developing student awareness of mathematics as a unique and powerful way of viewing the world. The extension courses provide opportunities to develop rigorous mathematical arguments and proofs and to use mathematical models more extensively. Biology has proven to be a really popular course at PLC Armidale. Nearly 75% of our Stage 6 students have opted to include this in their pattern of study. The course investigates cellular structure, inheritance patterns, the causes of genetic variation in both plants and animals, and the prevention and control of infectious and non-infectious diseases. In chemistry, candidates explore the properties and structure of matter, the types and drivers of chemical reactions, and how we measure the quantities involved in these processes. Much of the course is focused on recognising chemical patterns and applying these principles to unfamiliar situations. In physics, the course looks at motion, energy, electromagnetism, the nature of light and the atomic properties of matter. It requires excellent skills in algebraic manipulation and an ability to succinctly relate cause and effect. I'd suggest that advanced maths is almost a minimum to pair with this course. Investigating science has a working scientifically focus, with increased opportunities for depth studies. It incorporates ideas from all disciplines of science. Extension science is perfect if you're really enjoying Year 11 science and are interested in exploring a particular area in more detail. This one unit Year 12 course affords you that opportunity. In agriculture, the preliminary course incorporates the study of interactions between the components of agricultural production, marketing and management while giving consideration to the issue of sustainability of the farming system. The HSC course examines the complexity and scientific principles of the components of agricultural production. It places greater emphasis on farm management to maximise productivity and environmental sustainability. The farm product study is used as a basis for analysing social, environmental and economic issues as they relate to sustainability. CAPA subjects all involve the acquisition of skills in making products, artwork and compositions or performance. Every year I'm astounded by the incredible output of our talented students guided by our wonderful mentors. In visual arts and design and technology, students create a major body of work. This requires excellent organisational skills, time management, persistence and a passion for the subject area. Throughout these courses, students focus on the processes involved in the creation of works and also the research contributions of creations past and their influences on present and future works. Music One is available for those with a more contemporary interest in music. The curriculum structure is adaptable enough to meet the needs and interests of students with varying degrees of prior formal and informal learning in music. Music Two is designed for students with a background in classical music and an interest in performance, composition, musicology and oral within the context of a range of styles, periods and genres. Music Extension is also available for Year 12 for those with a strong passion for music and extensive background knowledge. Hospitality is a vocational education and training course. It provides students with a dual credential. It can be included as two units towards the HSC, but students also attain a certificate two in kitchen operations. As with all VET subjects, assessment is competency-based and involves students demonstrating to their teacher that they can apply skills and knowledge developed through the learning process. 
staff student relationships were amazing as well. Throughout all my assignments and my studying, the teachers were very open to being able to go up and ask some questions, which was very important because I wasn't great at getting my head around my assignments at first. It's definitely seen in my maths. In year eight, in my final year exam, I got 8%, and then in my HSC, I got 97. So <laughs> there's a massive growth there, which I know, like you can see, anyone can see how much of a difference that's made. I, yeah, I definitely credit my ATAR to PLC and the environment. I think generally just picking subjects that they enjoy is the most important thing. I know that a lot of kids, they have to pick certain subjects if they want to do a certain course, but I think that if someone really hates a subject that they have to get for a university course, then maybe they shouldn't be doing that university course because number one is doing something that you enjoy. And I think also, um, not picking subjects because your friends are doing them is another thing because for me I remember back in year eight I wasn't sure if I would pick French or German and I chose French because my friends were doing it and now I'm going to study in Austria and I've definitely struggled learning the language a bit and I think that I, I definitely wish that I hadn't made that choice back then but that's the most important thing is just that they enjoy the subjects. The humanities as a group of subjects are at their heart about people and places, from the study of ancient societies to the way that humans interact with their environment, through to the impact of the legal system on our everyday lives. The humanities are all about humans and the way that they live. The humanities help us to understand others through their histories, languages and cultures. English is compulsory for all Stage 6 students and is the one common element to all Stage 6 studies. At PLC Armidale, students can choose between Standard and Advanced English as their foundation course, with Standard focusing on more contemporary texts and Advanced focusing on canonical texts, including Shakespeare. Students can choose to extend the study of English through the taking of Extension 1 English and the independent project through the study of Extension 2 English, a student-devised and directed unit that can be as diverse as filmmaking, poetry, short stories or critical essays. We offer a wide range of subjects with something for all students. In the history, students can study either ancient or modern history, or both. There is also the option to study history extension in Year 12, which can be accessed from studying either modern or ancient history. The study of history is the key to understanding our world today. Like the histories, subjects like society and culture and studies of religion investigate different groups and religious and cultural connections. Society and culture looks at contemporary social issues and how they affect the way that we live. Studies of religion looks at world religions and allows comparative study of these different world traditions. Geography combines scientific study with the study of how humans have an impact on their environment through fieldwork and case studies. The practical application of skills is an important part of geography. Legal studies students study the application of Australian and international law in order to become informed and engaged citizens who develop a range of transferable skills. The real world examples of business studies allow students to understand the rigours of running a business through both practical and theoretical approach. Studying economics provides students with not just an understanding of human behaviour, but also cultivates in students problem solving, analytical communication and persuasion skills. And the study of languages allows students to become proficient in their language of choice and to be able to speak with confidence and fluency. Stage six drama brings together a diversity of cultures and ideas to explore our human condition through practical and theoretical study of theatre. Students learn skills in creativity, public speaking and teamwork, all while growing in confidence and independence. All of the subjects in the humanities develop the skills that are critical for success in today's job market and in the greater world. They equip our students to become engaged and informed participants in the world around them. Overall, I had a really positive experience doing the HSC at PLC. I had a lot of variation in my classes. I had classes like English Advanced, which had maybe 25 girls in them, which was really great for discussion and for group work. And then I had maybe six or seven girls in, say, economics, which was still nice because it meant that you got that greater level of attention in a subject that really did require that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, sort of tutoring. I never felt like I was missing out on anything in class and I knew that any additional questions or support uh, that I required uh, I would be uh, welcomed to go and ask the teacher and I think overall that made it a really nice wholesome experience whereby your teacher works with you and they make a really individual experience for you and they really want to see you succeed. So I think that was something that really did help me is knowing that I got to form this really good relationship with these people who knew me really, really, really well.
Well, I hope you have found that informative and helpful. There certainly are a lot of subjects available and perhaps that has led you to have questions that you would want answered. Please send them through on the Zoom chat to Anna Caldwell. We do have some questions that have already come in and Mrs Clinch, I'm going to field the first question to you. The question is, if I selected advanced English at the start of year 11, do I need to stay with advanced English or can I change during year 11? Excellent question. Uh, there's always room to move and there's always room to change courses if once you're in it, you realise that maybe it's not quite the right place to be. We have a new syllabus in English and what we have now is a common module that starts uh, year 11. So everybody does a unit called reading to write. And while it's done slightly differently in advanced and standard, it's a really good time to move if you need to. There's also time to move at the end of year 11 if that seems like a really good idea. But the people that you need to talk to are your teachers at the moment to figure out where you think you should start and the best people to talk to about that are your current English teachers in year 10. Thanks, Mrs. Taylor. Excellent. Thank you, Mrs. Clinch. The next question I'm going to take, is it possible to take three subjects that all have major projects, for example, visual arts, design technology, and extension to English? And I'm going to answer that question because it's not so much about the subjects that you're choosing, but it is about your self-discipline and your time management skills and your ability to manage three creative body of work. And as the principal, I often am supporting girls that are doing three very demanding patterns of study where there is a lot of their own time and energy put in, as is Mrs Caldwell. You see, girls, the difference is that you will have to be responsible for at least 50% of the final grade in each of those practical subjects in the major body of work that you undertake. It will be your ideas, it will be your direction, it will be your concept that you need to bring to life in whichever uh, mode or technology that you execute your project in. So certainly, studying more than one major project subject is very feasible and possible. Many girls study two and do manage that load quite comfortably. Three girls, you must understand that it will require you to start early and use that uh, Christmas January period at the end of year 11 to really nail ideas for your major project because many of those subjects have their um, practical component submitted at the same time that the trial examinations are sat. And so that just creates an extra pressure point. But that's a great question to consider. The next question I might direct to you, Mrs Ahern. How important are our preferences in the early form and does it matter which order I place my subjects in? So perhaps for the parents' benefit, Mrs Ahern, it might be helpful to outline the way that we actually go about constructing the lines because it's very much generated by the girls. Oh, great question, thank you. Um, we always get asked the question about lines. It really is driven by student choice. So following this evening, there will be a subject selection form that will be put onto Canvas and will also be available via a link. And in that form, there are preferences. So English is something that you need to study, so you pick which English. We then have maths which it is recommended that you study a mathematical um, course because most courses at university do require some level of maths. And then further down the form, you then have the preferences. So for each preference, you need to select a course. In terms of preferences, we then gather those preferences and we then put them into a timetabling system called EDVAL. EDVAL tries to find the best pattern for the most satisfaction for student choice. So we have about an 80 to 90% satisfaction rate on our subject selection in terms of our lines. At PLC Armadale, we've been really fortunate that we've been running eight lines, which means that we have more choice, more subjects running. 
Um, but I might hand over to Mr. Schumach because he's also got some information on this one. Yeah, so I guess just to reinforce the point there, uh, the preference order at this stage, uh, where you'll be asked to just list subjects in order of preference uh, without any line structure, is actually really important for how the program uh, prioritises uh, your preferences and, and sorts them into an order to, to create the line structure. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, something that you might preference as your first preference might be weighted with a weighting of 100 by the software. Uh, whereas your second preference might be given a weighting of 80 and your third of 60. And so the program gives each a value and th that value weighting is designed to, uh, to allow it to run through all of the possible combinations to find the best fit for the particular cohort of students. So back to, I guess, the original part of the question, uh, is my preferences, or are my preferences really important in the first form? Absolutely, because that's what determines the line structure. Thank you, Mr. Schumach. While you've got the microphone there, could I perhaps ask you to explain to the girls what's the difference between the preliminary courses in your STEAM subject area and the HSC courses? Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the Year 11 courses are very much focused on skill development uh, and I guess facilitating you with all of the skills and expertise that you need to then layer the content of the, the Year 12 courses on top of that. Uh, that's not to say that Year 11 courses don't have their own content, uh, but, but the focus within the, the Year 11 courses, particularly in the STEAM area, and I, I know it's similar across the humanities as well, is really about skill development uh, so that you're ready to attack the, the HSC year, the year following. Wonderful, thank you. And perhaps following on from that, um, Mrs Clinch, would you be able to explain around extension to English and extension history, are they available in the preliminary year or only in the higher school certificate year? So both of those subjects are only available in year 12, so in the higher school certificate year, uh, but you do need to have done a history subject to be able to access extension history in year 12, and you need to have done extension one English to be able to extension two when you're in year 12. Now both of those subjects have a major project component as well. So they are those subjects for students that love these subjects. So if you love English, Extension 2 is a wonderful place. Uh, and you can really follow a really wide variety of different types of subjects there in terms of you might be interested in film and creating film, or you might love writing critical essays, or you might be a budding poet who has a suite of poetry just hiding inside. Um, Extension 2 is the place for that to happen. And then when we think about extension history, again, it's about depth. So those people that really love history, this is a chance to actually find that thing that they're really interested in and to take it to a new level of study, really. They are extension subjects and really great fun. Thank you. And Mr Schumach, what about in the STEAM faculty? Are there any ex extension subjects to be accessed in Year 12? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can do Extension 1 Mathematics for Year 11, but uh, Extension 2 Mathematics is only Year 12. Uh, the same applies for Extension Music uh, and also Extension Science. They are for Year 12 only. Great. Thank you. So perhaps then Mrs Ahern might be able to answer the next question, which is about how many units should the girls aim to be studying in year 11 and how many in year 12? We know that NESA say it must be a minimum of 12 for year 11 and a minimum of 10 for year 12, but what's the recommendation at PLC Armadale and how do you manage picking up these extra subjects in year 12 if you've already got a full complement of subjects in year 11? Yeah, that's a great question. So at PLC Armadale, we often have girls studying 13 or 14 units in year 11. Um, the minimum is 12. Often in year 12, we have very few students that actually go down to 10 units. Most students decide to have 12 units, so they might go from 14 to 12 units. The idea behind having more units than less is that, as I explained in the presentation, your ATAR is made from your top 10 units. So having 12 units at the HSC year in year 12 is really beneficial because you then have what we might call a buffer subject. So you may have subjects that you know you're gonna do really, really well in, but if something does happen, 
you then have a backup subject that you may actually do better in than one of the subjects that you thought you'd do well in. So we do encourage girls to have between 13 to 14 units in year 11 and we very much encourage having at least the 12 units in year 12. In terms of picking up the extension subjects, um, that often makes that 12th unit for a lot of our students. Um, but as Mrs. Clinch and Mr. Schumach said, you do need to study either the extension one subject or you need to study the subject at stage six. So in the case of history, you have to do ancient or modern. Mm. Thank you. And Mr. Schumach, you might like to ask the next question, which is if students don't select maths to study, are they at a disadvantage if they wish to go to university? And does the college have a recommendation about mathematics study in stage six? Uh, I, I guess it does depend partly on the intended pathway into tertiary study, but more often than not, uh, a level of mathematics is, is certainly uh, recommended and we would suggest that, that students do try to challenge themselves uh, to, to not only take a, a mathematics course as part of their pattern of study for year 11 and 12, but also to challenge themselves to, to pick the highest level of math that they think they can attempt. Um, so uh, we, we've actually just entered an era where there is a common component of mathematics uh, HSE exams between the, sta uh, the standard mathematics course and the advanced course. Uh, so generally what that tends to mean is if you can challenge yourself to do the higher level maths, uh, in that case the advanced course, then you're, you're better off trying that mm -hmm. uh, as long as you apply yourself to it. Uh, so yeah, yes we would encourage you to, to study maths and, and over 90% of students would include maths in their pattern of study for year 11 and 12 here uh, and it, it certainly has its advantages not only for the tertiary sector but particularly with the emphasis and the standard course on on mathematics in practice maths that that's useful for for everyday life um, I, I think it's really important to think about including that in your pattern of study thank you and I, if i put my parent hat on for a moment i have a daughter who has chosen a very humanities heavy load for the hsc and she studied mathematics in year 11, but wanted to pick up extension to English for year 12 and realised that if she was going to have time to put the effort into her major project, as well as in her other subjects within the humanities area, then something had to give. And for her, it was the extra work involved in attaining the, the grades in mathematics that were going to be advantageous for her. I was disappointed as a mother, but I also respected her decision and I'm thrilled that she studied it for the prelim course. Mr. Schumacher, you still have the microphone there. So there's a question that's come through. Again, it's around the selection process. If you put preferences into the form, but then they have changed dramatically, will that have an impact on how the final lines are derived? And what should you do if that's happened? Uh, yeah, so as I highlighted earlier, the, the original preferences without line structure uh, are what we use to determine the line structure. Uh, so if you have a, a massive change of mind in between the, the point where you hand in your original form and, and, and uh, the, the, the weeks after that, uh, I would encourage you to, to try and make contact as soon as possible. Uh, the, the process of generating those lines will happen in the later half of this term. Uh, and if your uh, priorities have shifted a long way, it could actually make a, a large difference in, in what pattern of study is available, particularly with a relatively small uh, number of students. Uh, a couple of preference sh shifts can actually make a big difference in how we allocate the line structure. Uh, so have a really good, really good think about that. Uh, engage with your teachers and ask them about you know subjects that are suited to you and your strengths. And 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 think about what you know some of our students said in the videos before. Pick subjects that you know you have an interest in and you can be motivated to study for that two-year period. Uh, and that's really important. Mm. I think it's also worth knowing, girls, that because we use a computer program to determine that final line structure that's based on your preferences and we're aiming for a high satisfaction rate, it does mean that whilst the majority of our girls will be really pleased with the lines when they come out, there's always a small number of girls and it usually is only one or two, sometimes three or four girls that find that the final lines are not uh, in line or in accordance with their preferences. 
And that's simply because they've chosen a pattern of study that's not as common as the pattern of study that many of the others have chosen or a combination of subjects. So, and I'm happy for anybody to answer this question on the panel. When we have a situation like that where we have uh, a couple of girls where the lines are not what they were hoping for, what do we do and what do they do more importantly? So it's a good question from the humanities perspective. Uh, I think a really good example here is that I teach both ancient and modern history. And I am fairly sure that if you like one, you'll probably like the other one as well. Even if you might have a moment where you think that modern is definitely the thing that you absolutely must do, I'm fairly sure that once you're in an ancient class, you'll probably like that as well. So I think that making those decisions, having your heart absolutely set is something that won't necessarily work out. There are lots of different patterns of study and I find that once students are in a class and they're engaging with the content, that that course becomes something that they're actually really enjoying. So I think that if the lines aren't quite what you wanted, what you probably need to investigate is something that is like, something that is perhaps similar, and have a rethink about the ways that perhaps you might choose between, say, modern and ancient history um, as an example. Mr Schumach? Yeah, I, I guess to follow on from that uh, and to again stress the importance of your original preferences, uh, if there's something that your heart is absolutely set on and it's preference one, two or even three in your preferences, there's a high chance that that will align for you and we can organise those line structures for you. Uh, something that sits sixth or seventh in your list of preferences, it, the chances of it falling your way are much lower. So if, if you're absolutely set on, on a couple of subject areas, and this is after English and maths, uh, then make sure you preference them one, two or three to have the best chance of those lining up on, on separate lines for you. Mm. And that's actually a great piece of advice, Mr Schumack, because girls, we will always run advanced English. We will always run mathematics. We will always run standard English and standard mathematics. So you don't need to include those as high preferences. Go for the subjects outside of those core English and maths courses to prioritise because those courses we will guarantee will run each year. Mrs Sohern, perhaps if I can ask you to respond to our next question and it is, in that final HSC mark, could you perhaps explain what is that HSC mark? Is it one mark or is it one mark per subject or how do the marks, does the marks work for the HSC? Yeah, great. Great question. Um, so the HSC is made up of internal assessment and then the external HSC exam. So internal assessment, most courses would set four assessment tasks and they would usually be one each term. There is some variation in that. Um, all, subjects sit a, all subjects set a trial exam and they're usually in term three. That makes up 50% of your HSC mark those four assessments that you would sit across that year. Then your HSC exam makes up the other 50% and then we go into scaling, which is where your mark is aligned with other people in the state who have sat the HSC that year. And uh, is the HSC mark then dependent on your year 11 work and your year 12 work? Yeah, no, the year 11 year is a really good year for establishing those skills, um, establishing the work ethic and the study ethic and really introducing the concepts in your subjects, ready for you to tackle the year 12 year, which is the year that does count towards your, your HSC. Mr Schumach or Mrs Clinch, would either of you have a comment that you would like to make about subjects in your areas, respective faculty areas, and how they may or may not be impacted by scaling? Uh, uh, maybe a, a slightly separate note about the process of moderation. Uh, so I, I know a lot of students will say, oh, I have a teacher who always sets really difficult tests and, and, and they're, they're so challenging and our marks are really low that, that we're getting at school. Uh, how will that affect, you know, if that's half of our HSC, how will that affect? Yeah. So what actually happens is that they take the, the marks that your teachers send away and they moderate, moderate those against the exam scores for the, the students in your course. So having a teacher that sets more difficult assessment tasks or easier tasks or marks harder or easier, in the long run it actually doesn't yeah. have an impact on your overall results. Uh, I would argue that personally I think more challenging tasks actually 
put you in uh, a better position in long term. Um, and uh, I guess sometimes that can be a little bit of a, a challenging thing for people to confront in year 11 and 12, that, that the, the numbers on, on, on your assessment tasks might not be the number you're hoping for by the end of the HSC. But I just, I just wanted to reassure people that that process of moderation against those exam scores is how it all evens out across the state. Excellent. And while you have the uh, microphone, Mr Schumacher, a question's being typed in as I speak. And the question is, does preliminary mathematics extension one, as a one unit course, need to be listed as a preference for the purpose of determining lines or all courses in maths above the line? Uh, so yes, the, the extension courses, we'll, we will ask for preferences on those. Uh, of the eight lines that we structure, there'll be one line dedicated to English and one line for maths. Uh, but then the extension subjects, we've found that we get greater flexibility and, and a greater opportunity to cater to your needs if we can move them across other lines, the other six lines. So we will ask for preferences for those extension subjects so we can uh, make it fit uh, the best for, for the majority of candidates. And the next question, perhaps Mrs Ahern, you might like to answer, and I think this question's come from someone who really wants to have a go at a range of subjects, but they're a bit concerned, what if they start a subject and they don't like it? So if you start studying a course and you are really not enjoying it, how long do you have to change and can you change subjects? week four of term one and for year 12 as long as you have 10 units you can drop courses at any time as long as you maintain those 10 units. Well our time is almost up. I trust that you have found this afternoon helpful. The good thing about our, the way that we've conducted our information evening tonight is that it is also being recorded so there's an opportunity of going back and having a look at some of the slides and we're going to make some of those video clips, especially of our uh, newer old girls available through the PLC Armadale YouTube channel. I think if I look at what characterises a successful student in stage six, it certainly will be the girl that gives everything a go. It will be the girl that chooses subjects that they are really interested in, not choosing, as Isla said, subjects because their friends have chosen them or even thinking that they would choose a subject simply because a particular teacher might be teaching it in previous years. Girls also that get involved in the wider activities of the college because your portfolio, which is a collection of statements and reflections of all of the things that you've been involved in in stage six, becomes really important when you are seeking either scholarships or places at universities or training facilities post school, when you can demonstrate that yes, you've made a great attempt in your studies, but actually you've really embraced the wider life of the college as well. And all of those girls, certainly with very impressive ATARs, were active participants in social service, in sports, in public speaking and debating, in our musical productions, in the creative arts generally, and particularly in a number of our music ensembles. So I think that certainly is a graduate outcome for a PLC girl, a girl who is well-rounded, a girl who is accomplished, but a girl who also has the humility to serve and to give back from the benefit of the education that they have received. So I trust that this evening might have given you uh, lots of information to ponder. You do have a stage six subject handbook to work through as well. There may be further questions that arise and please direct them. If it is around the uh, humanities area to Mrs. Clinch, if it is any of the STEAM courses to Mr. Schumach, to Mrs. Ahern for any of the questions you may have overall about studying in stage six 
And of course, Mrs Corwell and I would be delighted to take any questions as well. Thank you to our production team that have helped this evening in turning the Astra Arts Centre into a little um, studio. And I trust that it's been a really worthwhile opportunity for you to be part of our Stage 6 Subject Information Evening. Thank you and have a great night, everyone. <laughs>